Hello, I'm Richard Tully with Bentley Systems and in this short video I will outline the connections available when using the Eurocode option in RAM connection. I have already opened the RAM connection module so what you're looking at is the opening screen. The steel connections implemented in RAM connection are in accordance with the guidance given in the SCI green books. That's to say P358, joints and steel construction, simple joints to Eurocode 3. These are nominally pin joints and publication P398, moment resisting joints in Eurocode 3. These documents provide procedures for designing joints and steel frame structures in accordance with BSEN 1993-1-8 and its accompanying national annexes and with BSEN 1993-1-1 and its national annex. The national annex requirements for other European countries can also be accommodated and the procedure for incorporating these requirements will be shown shortly. So one of the first things you would normally do when you open the program is select a joint type and you can do that by going to the home screen and clicking on new and in this dialog box you can create a new joint and the joint opposite joint you can select from the list of joints here. So we have BCF which stands for beam column flange, BCW which stands for beam column web, BG is a beam girder connection, BS is a beam splice, CS is a column splice, CC is a continuous beam over column, CBB is a column beam and brace connection. CVR is chevron braces. VXB is a vertical cross braces. CB is a column base. I scroll down here HCBB is a horizontal column beam and brace. HBBB is a horizontal beam beam and brace. And at the bottom we have HXB which is a horizontal cross brace. Now only some of these connection types are available when you select the Euro code. Just let me close this dialog box. You can now see on the screen a highlight of all those connection types and the ones shown in red are not available when the Euro code is selected. So while we're on the home screen, let's look at some other features which become available when you use the Euro code. If I click on the Generate button under Load Conditions, there is an opportunity here to generate load combinations when selecting the Euro code. So here you can select Serviceability Limit State Factored Load Combinations and Ultimate Load Factored Load Combinations from these two options here. For example, if I select EN 1990-2002 ULS, so we're going to look at Ultimate Limit State Factored Load Combinations. And if I click on Generate, that will generate a load combination as shown here. I'm just going to cancel that just now and cancel that. Just now we only have one load case selected. If I want to add any more, I can click on Add Edit. I can add a second one. Let's say a live load. So under Description, I'll just type in Live Load. And the category. I'll select LL for live load. If I want to add a combination down here, so I'm just going to call this U1 for ultimate limit state, say 1. The dead load factor, I'll put in as 1.35, and the live load factor, 1.5. And the type, if I double click on here from the drop down box, I'll select design and click on OK. So now we have two load combinations. So if I go back to generate and again select the ultimate limit state factor load combination and click on generate, I can now generate three load combinations. And if I click on OK, go back to add edit, you'll see all the load combinations are now included in this dialog box. One other thing while we are on the home screen, if I click on sections under the databases, and if I select Europe, here you can see all the standard section database information is available for all the European sections within RAM connection. So I'm just going to close that just now. Similarly for materials, if I select Europe, we have all the appropriate grades of material 
for the steel sections. So again, I'm going to close that. Again, if we're going to connections, and again, we have all the standard connection types here. Down at the bottom, we've got fin plates. We've got that for beam column flanges, beam column webs, and beam girders. So we've got all the standard connection type here with all the standard templates. Again, I'll close that. And similarly for bolts, then we have all the bolt sizes. And also for welds. So let's move to the design tab up at the top. And this is where we can assign that we want to use the Euro code for our designs. And if we go up to the, so to assign the Euro code, we go up to the code as noted here under design, double click on that, go to this drop down box and here we can select the Euro code. I can change the design parameters here, the maximum strength ratio or the unity value. Just now I'll leave that at one. And here the parameters of the national annex can be changed for different countries within Europe. So if I configure that, so the first tab we've got here is general, and we can change things like the allowable bolt grades. Under safety factors, we have the opportunity to go in and change the factors, again, depending on the national annex requirements. And also for lateral torsion buckling, here we're using the default values, and again, they can be changed according to the national annex parameters. I'm just going to click on OK there, and click on OK to change the design. So we've now selected the Euro code, and now I'm going to come down and design the connection type. So if I come down to the basic connections, and here we have a list of connections which are available with the Euro code. So the connections available, as I mentioned earlier, are in accordance with the SI publication. So we use publication P358, and that is for simple connections or nominally pinned connections. And the requirements for them are shown from this basic DAWC connection using double angle uh, connections. So from that one down to the bottom here, these are all simple connections. And for the moment connections, we use the top one down to the basic BCP CS web. And again, that is shown in this screenshot, which you now see on the screen. So going through some of these connections, the first one here for the simple connections or the pinned connections, here we're just subject to generally shear only or some axial loading. So the first one is a basic double angle connection. So that can be to the beam flange or the beam web. Basic web angle cleats for column slices and basic web bolted cover plates and basic flange bolted cover plates. Below this we have fin plates, we have flexible end plates and we have flexible end plates extending the full depth of the beam. We have flexible end plates connecting circular column sections. So these are generally subject to axial loading. So up at the top we have the moment connections. So we have a beam end plate flush with the member. We have a beam end plate extending one way. And here we have a bolted end plate for a haunch connection and a bolted end plate for a haunch extension extended in both directions. And here we have an end plate for a beam splice, an end plate for a beam splice with the plate extended. And here we have bolted cover plates for a column splice with the cover plates attached to the flanges. And here we have bolted cover plates where the cover plates are attached to the web of a column splice. So these are all moment connections from the basic BEP flush down to the basic BCP CS web. And that's as shown in the attached screenshot. So as we can see here, the connections are split into connection categorised in accordance with the SAI Green Book. Next we will look at examples of typical shear and moment connections designed using RAM connection in accordance with the requirements of the Eurocode. So here we have a beam column connection, so as shown here. So if I just uh, use the, the mouse, I can rotate the model. So that was set up in the home screen. So it was set up in here, we selected the sizes, we applied some loads, we applied the shear. So this has been designed in accordance with the Euro code. Once that's been designed, you have the option of going in and you could edit the section using the parameters on the left here in the connection pad. You can view the results. You can actually view the formula used. So you can confirm all the formula used. So let's close that, and you can also get a DXF view of the connection, which can be exported to any CAD package. 
I'm just going to close that. So that's a typical beam, uh, beam flange connection. So that was using a fin plate. And here we're using, so here we're using a partial end plate. And the next connection we're using a full depth end plate. And here we're using splice between two column members. So that's four rectangular hole sections. And for circular hole sections, we have a connection like this. So this is where we can apply an axle load in the member and we can design the connection for the axle load. We can also design base plates. Here's an example with a base plate. So let's look at some of the fixed connections. So these are in accordance with publication P398. So here we have an end plate. You'll notice the difference in the thickness of the end plate compared with the simple connection. So here we have a substantially greater thickness because we're trying to limit the rotation at the end of the member and provide fixity at the end. So here we have an extended end plate. Here we have a horns connection. And here we have an extended horns connection. Okay, so that's an example of some connections which you can get, get normally pin connections, which generally take shear, or in the case of some of the columns, take axle loads as well. And here we have some moment connections, which take bending moment, shear, and axle load. So thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you found it of some use. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.